Hey, if you're enjoying Hooks and Ladders, and why wouldn't you be enjoying Hooks and Ladders? Be sure to like and subscribe, follow us on social media, and hey, head on over to songstudio.ca to check out what we're up to. If you sign up for our mailing list, you'll be the first to know everything that's coming up and everything special that we got going on at Song Studio. You won't regret it. Hey, welcome to Hooks and Ladders. What you're about to see is part of what we did at the Song Studio Workshop in Toronto in July 2022. There'll be lots more to see. We're just going to roll it out a little bit at a time. So sit back and enjoy. And if you want to know more about Song Studio, visit www.songstudio.ca and check us out. Enjoy. So um, do you want me to tell about the best yeah. show I ever saw? Yes. Yeah. So... On the Danforth, the Danforth musical. It was last week or the week before, I guess. Yeah. But um, it, Blair was playing, and but I didn't go to his show because I went to another Mine show. Mine wasn't the best show he's ever seen, <laughs> but it was still pretty good. Yeah, yours. Well, I saw you. There. I had yeah. seen you a couple of weeks That's before, right. yeah. and I yeah. I knew that it was good. And I was tempted by how great your show was to come to your show as yeah. well as that show, Very thinking fine. that the Danforth yeah. was close to sauce. Yeah. But um, anyway, uh. I went to the show to see Michael Fronte in Spearhead. Do you guys know Michael Fronte? So I've been seeing this guy play since the 80s, like in th th two other bands and on his own and then with Spearhead and all this stuff. And I was kind of actually sort of tired of seeing him, but I always found him interesting. I've met him in the past and, and everything. And he's really like one time he was in an industrial band in the 80s. And I think they sold me like a vinyl on the street one day. Wow. <laughs> and, uh, but, but either way, he was in a band before called Disposable Heroes of Hypocrisy. And then he was just Michael Fronte and then Michael Fronte and Spearhead. And he's had some kind of hits, like he's had some actual hits and he's a hippie and he's an activist and he's a very special person who brings people together. And like, you could like what he's done with his success, which is mid, mid level. Like he yeah. can come and play a thousand to a thousand people in a town, but not every town. And, but he can tour and he can make money touring. He, he bought a house in Bali and you can go to Bali and there's like do yoga and listen to him play music and oh. stuff like that and pay him 3000 bucks. So the, selling it, selling the thing, fewer people are engaged with for more money is a good lesson. But the best lesson from him was be awesome every single time. So he, 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 he had to, I thought it was ridiculous when the show started too. And it's like he had this giant screen and I'm like, he can't be possibly playing, carrying that giant LED screen on the road, which he was. Um, and it's showing his album cover and showing merch and advertising the boat cruise that he's doing in November 2023. You could either was a QR code, you could get tickets. Wow. And by the by, the end of his show, I was like, I'm going on that boat cruise, <laughs> and, uh, and so the but he what and then he's it's sort of like some hype and some advertising, but I had been following his marketing plan from the beginning, yeah. thinking like, wow, he's really doing like the kind of job that all the people that are selling you stuff that you don't want to buy are doing, but he's doing all those tricks and, and just probably from observation. Right. And so he had to, tickets went on, or his album first went on a pre-sale okay. six months ahead of the CD coming. And I was like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to buy it. I don't even buy physical goods, but my wife really likes him. And so I was like, I'm going to buy that. Because maybe it'll get here by the time she has a birthday, but there'll be something yeah. that'll be happening that I can give it to her for. And so I order it. And then, you know, months go by or weeks go by. And then I get a thing. It's like, oh, Michael Fronte is coming on tour. Well, they already have my email address because I bought the CD that I still don't have. Yeah. And oh, and they were doing Zezzle. You know, that Zezzle thing where you can no. do Zezzle's like break it down into four payments. It was a CD. It was $20. It was like $5 a month. <laughs> it's like, I thought, I'm going to pay $5 a month because I'm not even going to have it. By the time right. Why have the money go out the door? Yeah. So I just, they took it out of my PayPal, $5 a month. Then it's like, the tickets are going. So I was like, I'm definitely going to buy tickets because Megan will want to go to that show and I can have the tickets now and I give it to like, she got the tickets before she got the CD. Right. So she got those at Christmas or whatever. And then, um, so I'm like, okay. And then, then I'm getting more information, but not, it, I'm being retargeted, you know, in a traditional advertising sense, but in a positive way for information yeah. I want to know about. And then, um, then it comes time for the show and, and we go to the show and I, I talked to you about going to the show and you knew the guy that was opening the show. So I actually looked him up and listened to some of his music before the show. Song studio guy, Chris Assad. 
Yeah, right. and he was really great and had his own thing that he was building too. Like, and yeah. that's bigger picture than just his songs, but yeah, but it's all about his songs and yeah. the uh, peaceful nature of them, yeah, and inclusive nature of them. And he runs a camp which yeah. is coming up. Yeah, I was like thinking a of going of some sort. Yeah, yeah I was thinking yeah. of going. Yeah, I was yeah. like, that oh, might be fun to go to. It was yeah. like an adult camp. Yeah, uh, but anyway, so in Algonquin, and so he plays and he's really good. And then Michael Fronte comes out with his band. And it's like, oh, it gives a countdown on the screen. Like it was like a 30 seconds to the show, two minutes to the show. And the clock wow. is counting. I'm like, I'm like, oh, great. We know it's two minutes. Yeah. I can go to the bathroom because yeah. I have two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. And uh, I can go get another beer and then go to the bathroom again. <laughs> but the anyway, so then uh, it, it cuts down and then the band come out and you're like, Oh, this is great. And then Michael Fronte comes out a few minutes, like a minute after them. Yeah. And the crowd starts getting, the crowd is now really excited. And he starts his first song and immediately it's audience participation with clapping. Yeah. Which I would generally have told artists not to do that. Right. Um, but the, That's, but I have seen some artists do it. It's amazing. Something Bruce has said. Where's Bruce? Uh, Bruce has said he opens with a sing-along. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, if you can get people to engage yeah. with you right away, that's amazing. And... Um, and he did that show that it's like it started like the last show of a set for any normal artist. And I thought that's really the game you need to bring. Yeah. Like, it's like, it's like, I'm not building to a crescendo. Well, I am, but it's going to seem it's like this. Here. You can't, you can't get any better than yeah. the first song. Yeah. And then he was like, then next thing I know, <laughs> he's standing beside me in the crowd high-fiving my wife We're, i'm taking selfies he's moves to the next people he's up in the balcony he's giving a little girl his hat he's like back down on the floor and then he grabs somebody and i had noticed this thing in the middle of dan fourth thing it was like the dinkiest weirdest little thing like a stage about this big with two lights on it and then he's up on that stage dancing with somebody and he did that about 10 times during the set where he came out and got somebody and put him up there with him and sang to them danced to them it was like crazy and then audience participation was like and it's like, you know, obviously we're not like, I'm not really hugging my friends, let alone strangers. Like, look to the left, look to the right. Now hug the person that you're looking at. And I was like, okay, I'm going to hug the stranger. It's like, and you're like, okay. And it's like, then you're like, and then like, hug somebody else. They'll do link arms with somebody and do -si do around and do this and form a big circle. Everybody get in the circle. It's like the over each song. And I'm like, I'm doing all of it. Yeah. And I was like, and having so much fun. And then he made everybody sing. And he's like, lyrics are up on the screen. He had a music video for every single song. That was extremely personal. Wow. They were like, mostly like he told the story of his Canadian wife. Yeah. And he, he pointed out how she was Canadian. And he used to live in Canada. He didn't talk about that. But yeah. he, this guy, he's been barefoot for 25 years. He like, hasn't worn shoes in 25 years. Wow. Yeah. wow. In winter too, right? And so anyway, he, no wonder he moved to Bali. It's a little easier yeah. on yeah. there. But it's like, I got to move. I can't, can't live in Edmonton for the rest of my life. Um, yeah. But he, um, but the show, it was extremely, and then he also, he gave an extremely passioned an appropriate talk about Roe versus Wade at the show. Wow. So he was able to bring it down to that and, yeah. and, and get people to participate. But at one point we were like, before the show, we we're looking at the merch booth and there wasn't a big line. And there was like a shirt that my wife wanted. I was like, well, do you want a shirt? You know, you can get a shirt for the, like, we'll get a shirt. Like, yeah. it'll be great. She's like, oh, I don't know. The shirts were like 50 bucks. Cause it, what American artists, like when they come in, it's like, oh, we have to adjust for inflation. Like Canadian and, prices. Canadian prices. Yeah, right. Yeah. And so they get here. And, uh, and we're like, well, I'm like, well, you can just get the shirt, whatever. We'll get a shirt. And she's just she's like waiting. And then five songs in, she goes, and, and he had just high-fived us and gone through and done all the stuff. And then she just turns to me with the biggest smile on her face. She goes, those shirts are going to be sold out for sure now. <laughs> and I thought, right. He's selling the merch. Yeah, right now, yeah. he's selling everything. I'm sure they sold out of the merch. Right, like right. It was a big lineup. Right. And uh, we did get merch. Was he at the merch table? Not when I was there, because I went there right away. Okay. And then I went to the bar next door, sidebar, whatever sidebar, it's called. Yeah. And I was seeing there's nobody in there. And the um, this, the person serving came over and uh, or got drink order from us, and we're the only ones there then. And she said, we were talking about being in there. She's like, oh, well, it's the same owners. So we I went over there uh, to see the show. And all I could think was, what drug have these people taken? Because yeah. I have pictures and video of it. It's like the entire Danforth 
yeah. is going bananas and yeah. he's in the middle and it's it, it was euphoric. And I was like, I never go live on Instagram. I was like, I'm going live Jeff on Instagram. Went, Jeff went live. So I get in, I, I know, you know, like uh, Jeff Rogers has just gone live. So I'm like, oh, okay, cool. And and he's like showing himself and his wife. And he's like grinning like crazy. It was funny. And then all these people, it looked like a madhouse in the best way. It was it was a madhouse yeah. in the best way. Anyway, this is, so we were telling her about the show. And then um, uh, some people come on the on the thing and Megan said, my wife says that she's like, I just heard that guy say the hard drugs kicked in right when he did this. And we were laughing and thinking like, Oh, how crazy is that? Yeah. And then I know them. And so, <laughs> and then they turn around and we're just talking and they weren't really stoned or anything, but they were like, they, they said, we're just talking about, we haven't seen each other in two and a half years, you know, kind of yeah. thing. We're at a show. Yeah. And then the one guy that I don't know goes, Okay, can we just talk about something? We all just saw that show next door, right? And everybody's like, yeah, I know, I'm changed. And then two other people sat down who had driven in from Newmarket for the show. And they're like, excuse me, excuse me. And I was, I don't want to pay attention to them. I don't know them, right? Yeah, and like yeah. now someone's talking to me. Right. And they're like, they're holding money in their hand. And I really don't want to talk to them. They're like, we want to buy you a drink. And I was like, uh, okay, I didn't want a drink because yeah. I already had just had one and I was happy with my drink. Yeah. And I was like, okay. And so I let him buy me a drink because I could tell it was important to him. And then they start talking to us. They're like, wasn't that show amazing? We just wanted to buy you a drink because of that show. And like, I was like, they just sort of want to pay well, it Well, because everyone, kind of, no, everyone was so full the, of love. The vibe. They yeah. were so full of wow. love. We hope you've enjoyed this little taste of the Song Studio Workshop in Toronto in July, 2022. Stay tuned for more.